Okay, um, 7.33, and I will call this meeting of the Education Committee of the RTM to order. A quorum uh, of eight is present. Um, tonight we also have uh, Jill and Cannon from the Board of Education who will give us a bit of an update on their process. Um, before we move to discussion of the budget, um, we're not uh, going to approve the minutes of April 8th because they're not yet ready, but we will look to do that at the next meeting. Uh, moving on to the discussion of the uh, operating capital budgets <coughs> for the Board of Education. Ms. McCann, I think yes. we have a board <coughs> process. Sure. So, as you guys know, we um, went to the Board of Finance. We did not have our entire budget approved, so we are looking to recover um, the two million dollars that the the uh, board of finance did not approve, plus an additional about four hundred thousand dollars that has to do with some health insurance that's come in high, the cost of evaluations. Um, we are also uh, looking at the possibility of accounting for ECR. It came in at sixty-eight percent this year, um, and submissions across the state, as they are in our district, are up. So we are expecting that going into next year um, that it's likely that we would need to, um, we're considering uh, whether or not to go ahead and, and plan for that in advance. Um, all of that is to be discussed. Our first meeting to discuss this new uh, budget uh, structure is tomorrow, May 7th. Um, the following meetings are May 14th and May 28th when we finally, when we plan to vote. We went ahead and put a meeting before the RTM vote just to get the process started. Um, but our second two meetings occur after your budget vote because uh, we understand that our budget number is not final until after we've heard from the RTM. So I believe you have seen our materials for tomorrow night's meeting. Mm -hmm. Because the board has not uh, gone through them at all, I don't really have the ability to comment uh, on them this evening. Um, but. They certainly are public at this point, and we'll be going through them in detail tomorrow night, the 14th, and finally the 30th. And so maybe if people have questions on process, we could ask you, and, and I'm going to maybe start with one just to say what I think we're doing, and yes. you may know this better than all of us, but so we're meeting next week as the RTM to approve or not approve the capital budget and the operating budget. Right. And what we will be approving is the effectively the numbers that have been put forth by the Board of Finance. Yes. And what you guys are doing is essentially reallocating things to sort of fall within that yes, number. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so right. So we're starting with the Board of Finance number. Of course, you all have the ability to cut additional dollars, which is part of why we're only starting the conversation. We're, we're not you know, beginning and ending tomorrow night. So yes, then after you guys take a look at it, then we have a final number that we know that we need to work to. And Ed is right, um, we don't just, while we are granted a large appropriation, um, in the operating budget, we need to actually redistribute the dollars to make sure that we properly account for how much money we actually have going into next year. Um, on the capital side, cuts are at the line item level. So um, we will um, be taking a look at any, we do, I think they do cut the token eat parking lot. Um, and then we will be looking at um, how to, again, how to redistribute operating dollars um, and, at, and at the line item. And as another clarifying question, and so if in your discussions you ended up with, um, okay, well, this revenue raiser is not 200000 but it's going to be 400000 yes. would that then give you another 200000 effectively to spend elsewhere because it basically the operating budget is a net number is that yes operating budget yes exactly so we are looking at <clears throat> excuse me in the memo that rich and alan prepared there are both um additional revenues through for example the cafeteria or or fees assessed uh, for extracurricular activities um, and there are also um additional cuts for efficiencies um, does anyone else have questions i, I have a question just so I understand, th this committee can vote to s recommend further cuts, but not <coughs> a restoration of any funds. Yeah, so okay. what we are effectively, like if you think about what the RTM is going to do, is going to yeah. vote this yeah. uh, you know, up or down, or could, yeah. could reduce it, and 
we and the Finance Budget Committee are delving into the detail and are meant to be coming back with a recommendation, which has traditionally been not always unanimous, but you know, a majority are recommending 24, and sometimes it's been close to unanimous. Okay. So, and, okay. I was just saying, as, as we're talking through the sort of um, the practicalities of how go, how this works going forward with the voting, I just want to confirm that a vote no to this budget reverts to the prior year's fiscal budget. There's no, we don't like this budget for whatever reason, you know, let's let's talk about it some more. It just reverts. So there's no, there's no real no vote option, if you will, Sorry. if you unless you want to kneecap the Board of Education. Is if I can, yep. I, I think we have, as RTM has the right to say, not 4.73, but 4. We don't yes. have to go back to zero. Right, we can meet somewhere in the middle, if the RTM chooses. I, I think that's right, too. So, yeah, that, well, that's what I was going to say. It's, it's not necessarily just up or down. It seems to me the question is, can the RTM say, okay, we want an additional cut, not, and then would that be voted on the floor of the RTM and then go back to the... Board of Ed, and is that, that what you think? That yes, if you cut. guys, you have the ability to cut our budget further. Yeah. And if, as a body, that happens, then let's let's say you cut twenty five dollars, then we go and add that twenty five dollars to what we need to redistribute. That's why you're keeping the discussion open. Yes, yes correct. Okay. Thank you, Clara. Yes, yes that's right. You know, Katie said there's no restoration though; it's only down. It can only it's it down can't go up. No. Yeah, they cannot add any money to the budget. We have no line item control over the budget. But you can make a hefty donation. <laughs> I do. <Right. laughs> Scrooge, not Santa. <laughs> I mean, if I can, on the process, you know, I, I understand the narrative about let's keep it open until the RTM votes, but historically there was a budget approved, right? Uh, by the Board of Education, Board of Finance, and RTM had a number, right? And you, you guys were set. This is different. All right, you know, uh, you guys had 35 days, Board of Education and the administration had 35 days to figure out since April 9th when the Board of Finance cut $2 million to present us with a, with, with uh, you know, approve, and approving this $2 million that you guys came up with. Now, I realize that coming with $2.5 million of, of cuts is, is not easy, and it takes time, and there were vacation in between, but I, but I, you know, one of the three things I always look at, right, is the process, and, and if you want us to vote for something, and, and what Liza is saying is, is, is true, right? We are sort of, we as RTM are sort of making sure the taxes are not too high, right? And we on this committee often, because we understand the education budget, you know, we would like to maybe go higher than the Board of Finance, so this is, this is tricky for us. But, you know, on the process, I mean, I don't understand why there hasn't been these meetings, why is it May, May 7, 14, and 28, why it wasn't uh, done earlier. And I understand getting two and a half million out of a budget that has a lot of fixed costs is not easy, but you know, I, I that's we really a question. We aren't working towards your process because it works in parallel. So we're working on our own process. We just wanted to build enough time so that we're ready by July 1st, which is really our deadline. Uh, we could have waited until after the RTM vote to have the final number to start anything. But given the size of, of the cut and uh, the desire to keep the conversation going, uh, we chose the month of May. Uh, but this isn't really, it isn't really run to, at least historically, to inform your process. It's really, um, it's really internal to the board about it because yours is not a line that you tell, it's just talking about. But historically, there were no changes other than the one year during COVID, right? Where, you know, you know what I mean? The process was done, right? By the time there were no allocations. So, you know, and we're going to get to these two and a half million, maybe we can discuss what we think about it, but the reality is, you know, this is a great proposal, and maybe we agree some of it, maybe I don't agree with some of it, right? But it, you guys could come with all the different issues, right? right. There were a bunch of add, add and cut issues that I didn't think that were helping us to achieve our educational goals and were maybe not as efficient for the, for, for the, uh, for the district, which are the two other lenses <coughs> that I always think about. And so not having, not having sort of, I mean, you're right, tomorrow's meeting is going to be, in, you know, informative, but... I just say going forward, maybe you know, I would recommend that you know, even though when Board of Education, Board of Finance, you know, comes in mid mid April to uh, to inform you that you need to make changes, that you do them before the R the R ten rules. That's just my my suggestion. 
I struggle. Go ahead, Claire. Yeah, go ahead, Claire. Well, I was just thinking that, you know, if you want to talk about process, one of the things that bothered me about this year and, and maybe a couple of previous years is the RTM Education Committee <coughs> submits questions and we get answers, but there's no real dialogue. And I wish that we could have that because, you know, when I saw the parents come in and talk about the middle school and other things that are legitimate concern, the, it, it occurred to me that the people who have a vote on your budget were sort of shut out. And I think it would be better if we could be more a part of a discussion. Um, maybe you would have found cuts that were um, more appropriate than the ones you found. You know, I mean, I kind of looked at a couple of questions that we asked, and sometimes I ask questions because I want to have a discussion. I don't ask them because I don't know the answer. So I guess I just think that maybe through the process, before you voted, I mean, there's this whole thing that's the superintendent's budget and that's what, I mean, that's sort of a semantic, you know, thing, and I think it would be better going forward if um, there were more dialogue between this committee and the uh, Board of Ed. I also think that um, way back, I reviewed some of the tapes and um, November 27th or something, you had uh, on the agenda that you were going to discuss um, major project, budget projects under consideration. And it was a very vague discussion. The superintendent even said that. If that had been a more hefty discussion, then maybe you could, he would have identified it. Maybe he did this in executive session. I don't know that. But maybe if he had had a more meaty dis meatier discussion, you would have seen things that were red flags there, and you could have talked about it then, rather than having to have the whole business of the parents getting excited. You know, there were other places, maybe, and maybe you'd even identify them for tomorrow, just so that the process would be smoother, and that you wouldn't be caught in this sort of May, you know, end of May with trying to find money. You know, that um, you know, it's just a, not a not a smooth process. Maybe it'd be a little smoother next time. I think there's a couple of things we were going for when we redesigned the budget process at the end of. Not completely, but when we took a look at the budget process last year and tried and tried to test what we thought was working, what was not, one of the things that we were looking for is much better planning in the spring um, to identify what some of the issues are and what some of the initiatives are, and so so I would say that we were um, at best modestly successful in doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something we'll be looking at very carefully in the spring um, and making sure that the, our, the bigger, weightier programmatic discussions are happening through the year. Yeah. I think there's also a need for us to bring some of our programmatic discussions up a level or two. You know, we don't, talking about $50,000 or $10,000 isn't moving the needle, isn't a huge educational shift. So there's a need for us to, though those may be important dollars, but there's a need for us to lift up the level of our dialogue. You see that, I think, very explicitly in an ad cut discussion where we're, you know, we're ticking and talking, but we're not really necessarily talking about the big picture. So my hope is starting in the spring, running through the summer and into the fall, culminating with that November presentation, that should be much more robust. Yeah. Paired with much better forecasting, I think we did, I, I do think we improved our forecasting this year. We explained that we were coming in between a 6 and 8%, and these were the drivers, and this is why, and this is what we were looking at. I think that was a great start. We can build on that and do that even better. I'd also like to see more tri-board participation a little bit earlier than that. Um, you know, uh, active discussion between the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, and the Board of Education um, to talk about how we prioritize, um, you know, financial needs versus, um, for example, what if the Selectmen have a really hefty capital budget and we actually find we've got a couple projects coming down the line, maybe we could actually pare back a little bit on our capital side and look, give them a little runway or vice versa. We could be doing a lot more of that, of that cross-town planning. So that's another thing I'd really like to see happen. Um, and that should be paired with guidance, better forecasting, uh, uh, more buy-in from the boards. And then I think the Board of Education is absolutely going to have to budget. You know, we, we had different people say, I'm not sure if I want to work for a number, or I'm not sure if, if, if I want to budget, I don't know what the number is. We as a board are going to have to consolidate around something, whether it is a number or a set of initiatives or um, something. But we absolutely need to present a, a budget that is at least reasonably in line with where we're going as a town. I think we're always still gonna, there, there's a natural tension between Board of Finance and Board of Education. I'm not pretending that there's any panacea there or that that should go away, that's, that's natural and important. Um, 
but I think there's, there's some work that we can do to bring everybody along better. The last piece to your point, Clara, was the questions and how those work. I think one of the things I'd really like to see the board do is, is how we just, at a very basic level, organize our questions. Because we take a batch of questions from you and we answer them in a batch. And we take a batch of questions from ourselves and we answer those in a batch. And we take a batch of questions from f and and answer those in a batch. And a lot of, there's a lot of crossover. And then there's like a little point A, point B, point C. And actually if you were to pull all those together and look at it under the lens of the program, the program instead of from that group, from that group, or from that group, I think we would do a much better job of actually analyzing and evaluating. So, you know, I think, and that's part of the dialogue is, is that I think we're just receiving things, answering back, but not really doing that analysis on the questions that we're receiving. Thank you. Thank you. No, I was I was along with what I was saying. I just think it's frustrating to see all this hard work by the administration, by the board, by the you know parents and teachers and community members who are you know giving comment throughout the process, which is very long, and then get a firm number that's you know so much less after everyone's gone you know so carefully line by line, you know questions asked, questions answered. It feels as though. We could have saved a lot of time and energy had that number been, you know, firmly established, you know, you know months earlier. And I, I think that it feels as though you're, you know, you're starting the budget with such a difficult, you know, fixed number, and you're, you know, presenting all the information to everyone like this is what we need, this is how we're going to do it, and then, to have, you know, the number. And I, I understand that there's this natural tension. You have to consider the needs of taxpayers versus the needs of the school. But it, it seems as though there, that number was, you know. If we were just going to say, okay, it has to be this percentage, we could have done that in January, and it would have been a lot more organized in terms of like how we were making decisions. You know? Yes. So that's I found that to be frustrating this budget season. Um, I know it's not the first time it's happened, but um, and I know we've talked about before, you know, sequentially how it makes sense to do the budget process. You know, do you start with a number and go from there? But um, I did find this this year that to be frustrating. Maybe one more thing, if I can. Uh, Claire organized for for District Two a great meeting last week with uh, Mr. Palin, where he talked about you know he said listen that, and I think it's it's been recorded. You know we gave Board of Education three to four percent guidance, right? And, and I guess my suggestion to you would be I'm not sure it was really the Board of Finance were appraised of some of the fixed costs that that came after or that came at the same time, right? Buses up eleven percent, healthcare up twelve percent. Special ad, thousand kids plus fourteen percent. I mean, I don't believe that he could give in a three to four percent guidance in knowing these numbers, right? So somehow around the presentation, and I think it was a, maybe the state of town in December when he said I would like to see three to four percent. Maybe by then, you know, if we, you could get to him somehow and say, listen, it's going to be hard to do that with these fixed costs, right? It was in early November when, when we gave that forecast. Some of, some of those numbers were in there. Some of them okay. continue to come in. Yeah. But I do think that there is a need for much more explicit work earlier yeah. in the in the fall. You know, again with the understanding that there is some give and take because contracts are still being settled or, or what have you. Things change. Um, but uh, but I appreciate the point, and I'm in agreement that there needs to be better work around that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry, did you have something? Um, is there a way that it would be more that we can have more communication earlier on with you, so that when we're getting to ask the questions, we're not we're asking questions that really are questions that haven't been answered. I think a lot of the questions that we submit, and I'm guilty of this, are questions that. You probably know the answer to easily, and if we could get some information from the Board of Ed earlier, then I think it would help us actually form questions more easily and provide you with less work. Thank you for the question. I think one thing that I love for us to think about as a town is, I mentioned kind of starting in the spring, really looking programmatically, being a lot more strategic, taking a look at how we're building kind of a multiple year plan. I think it's worth having folks take a look at that time and what's happening. And again, we've got to, we have to uphold it with fidelity. There are things that showed up in our budget this year that were new, that we're, we need to move away from that model to the extent that we can. Um, sometimes you just have to pivot. But, so I, I'm wondering if maybe some of what would help 
be some of thinking about that whole process as a much bigger process. So some of that strategic work in the in the spring, people getting that information, making sure that everybody has the same set of forecasting documents in, in perhaps early mid autumn, you know, and, and, and stringing it out over time so that um, you know we are learning all together along the way. But your question is a valid one. Um, in terms of in the, in the budget process, and I think it's worth taking a look at. Can I have one other point I want to make? I don't know if you all saw this, but Darien was just ranked the number two school system in the state. And I think that was a U.S. News and World Report ranking, and we were ranked 165 in the country out of, I can't remember how many thousands of schools. So I think. I think the Board of Ed and all of us that work hard on education and all the kids that are in our schools should be very pleased about that. And congratulations to all of us. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Um, if nobody has anything else, we thank you for coming. And you're welcome to stay and see the rest of how this sausage is made, but I think you have probably enough other things to do. And if you don't mind excusing me, I, I would enjoy mm -hmm. having a little less long evening than I'm at tomorrow. <laughs> um, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, with that, um, so we've got to discuss and vote on both operating and capital budgets. Um, we don't necessarily have to, we have to vote on them separately, but we can kind of just be discussing them. So I guess I'd like to just sort of open it up for commentary um, based on either what we received or what you all what we all received today or just the process in general um, what's not in here in terms of like the tax rates which I think you had done some back of the envelope math and you don't visit me I thought you had I thought you had done some like oh it's gonna turn out to be this much of an increase based on the yeah was it Peter? you discussed well we discussed it last week and I'm not sure well, we can go through it I mean, in I, this group, yeah. but I, you know, okay. it's, just, it's a side note, really, right, it, for us right now. But I think the overall budget is, if I have it right, is up 4.8%, right? But our taxes, some of it will be out of capital, capital funds, so the taxes will go up by 4% uh, for the town, uh, but for residents, for residential properties, it will go up 6%, about 6.06 .06 or something. That's what's, that's what's proposed if there's no more changes. And the reason is uh, we, have, we, have, we have to play a catch up because our evaluations are only every five years, so the commercial properties have been getting <coughs> higher taxes throughout those five years, so they actually have you know, less, than, uh, less than the 4%. So we should expect 6% tax increase. Uh, lower mill rate because our properties were up 29% over the last five years. I think that's the, that's the, that's the summary. But, Specifically to our, if I, if I can, is if two things, right? With the capital budget and the, and the and the operation. Just my question. I was reading that email from from Jack Davis regarding what he wants us to approve, and he wants us to approve the five-year budget, five-year capital budget. So so six-year, right? Next year. Next I know. Well, what he wants us to. I mean, it's going to be driven by what the. The town is now formally approving a six-year capital improvement plan. We used to informally approve advice to approve a budget, but there's a potential loss of state funding. The two documents are attached. So, so, you know, these are some big numbers. It's about 40 million of capital budget, right? There's roofs, you know, on the middle school and high school. So I, you know, I don't know if, if you want us to opine on it now or, or, or not. I guess that's, you know, that's question. Yeah, I mean, I, well, I mean, yeah, I think you should. Does, does he want I have I mean, an opinion. I mean, personally, I don't like the idea. I mean, I don't like the idea of approving a six-year. Well, I guess the question is, you know, you right? Like the idea of what? Approving a six-year budget. Oh. Okay. I mean, if we have to do it to get some tax benefit, okay, fine. But like, to me, that's like approving. It's like when they guarantee a contract in the NFL, and then the guy's cut, and it's not very guaranteed. Well, that was so, my question, right? How 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 really binding is this, right? Because. We could do something else with the middle school. Maybe we decide we need right. to build a new one, right? right. So you know, so, approving it so it's really a question, really. Uh, approving it if it's not binding is <laughs> it's easier. It's easy, right? So that's really a question, maybe for Jack. But you know, that, that might otherwise yeah. the capital yeah, budget for yeah. next year, which was I think uh, 1.2 million. Um, you know, 
we, we, we talked to it, or you know, the, the Board of Education talked to the side and said, I'm, I'm, f I'm fine with it, um, personally. So that's the capital budget. On, on the operational budget, Did, I don't know if anybody we, else is. Peter, why don't we just stay yeah. on the capital? Does anyone know? Because I thought it was, compared to what we've been seeing, it's far less controversial than in years past. So did anyone else have concerns on the capital budget? Um, and then, so would people like to vote on the recommendation of yes to the capital budget as uh, recommended by the Board of Education modified by the Board of Finance? I think that's going to be our Can I just get a clarification? Yes. Sorry, as a, as a new person, first time through. Somebody said before that the effect of a no vote, I think by the RTM, is a reversion to the previous year's budget. What was the budget? What was the budget last year? Is that both for capital and? Yes. Uh, it is separately. So everything there are two votes. Last two, year. Yeah. We vote on. Peter, go ahead. If you no, no, no. I yeah. don't. Yeah, I, I think we vote they're... separately on capital. Yes. And Okay. And so on the operating, uh, what has we had always been told was if we just voted no mm -hmm. on the operating budget, mm -hmm. then what they had by law to spend was what they had last year. Okay. Which is effectively a cut of six percent, right? Because if the budget so is one fifteen million, now it's one nineteen. Okay. Right, so Thank you. But sort of thing. separately, Thank you. we could cut further than what is, and so vote. Yes, but right. Does that? Well, I don't know. Technically, we probably would know, and somebody else would stand up and say, instead of 119, we are we want you to do 118. The people approve for it. So there's somewhere space between the zero and the 4.73. Doesn't have to be reverting to zero. So no would in, in effect be a further reduction from what's already yes. here. Okay. And last year, you, you, did you say 119, 051? You Last said, year? Yeah. Well, the budget was 115. Oh, 115? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's 119 this year. Yeah. Okay. And then for capital, we could go in there and say, oh, we don't like the carpet in the library, so we want to take that out. Like you can line that out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's sort of the interesting role of this of this committee, right, of RTM, which, which you know, which, which makes it tricky because we are here to make sure the taxes are not too high. But we often, or I have, have opinion that I would like to increase the budget at certain places, even though we don't have line item veto, you know. So, but if we don't have that. We don't have the, the power now. We could run for board of finance or board of education and those sort of things. So, can we get those positions? Are fun, Clara and I can tell you that from personal experience. <laughs> can we just get follow up? I know that today we're improving year this next year. Can we get some follow up from Jack on sort of his expectations? Will they to approve the next several years of the capital? Um, I can, I'm sure he's going to like. He's listening to this and being. No, 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 I mean, I think they're, I thought they were having a meeting tonight as well as Wednesday. Maybe their meeting is Wednesday. I might have okay. it wrong, but I'm sure. No, I don't think the FMB is meeting tonight. Yeah, then maybe it's Wednesday. But, they, but I, I'm sure they will clarify. Um, but I will. Um, so, uh, could we get a motion to approve the capital budget as uh, you know presented, or sorry, to recommend the approval of the capital budget? And just for clarification, I think we're only going to be recommending the approval of the next year's capital budget because we didn't have any discussion yep. whatsoever on six-year capital spending. Correct. Right. So, is, is so that you making a motion? I guess so. Yes. Okay. <laughs> is there a second? Yes, I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That is unanimous. Except wise, I couldn't tell if your hand was raised or if that was just an eyebrow. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Moving to discussion on the operating. So, what are you guys thinking? Well, I think I think the operating budget. What are you what are you thinking on the What are we thinking on the operating budget? <clears throat> it's really a hard question because I'm sure if we went around this table one by one, 
everybody would have a different thing on the operating budget that they wish was different than it is, either up or down. Absolutely. So I always find this part of the meeting to be difficult. So um, I don't know how you want us to deal with it. Well, I would say I think it's actually a little bit easier because we are just voting on a number. And we, we don't, <laughs> so it's, you're right, like you may care more about this particular item than I do, and I care about a different right. item, right. but we can both think that what's going to come out of the sausage making factory at 35 Leroy is going to, we think it's going to satisfy you, and I think it satisfies me. So I'm the optimist, and I think we'll have, it's, it should be an easier discussion because we don't have to debate the merit of this program or right. that program. Because that's other people that are going to be doing that. Right. And so All for, I'm saying is I think that given, given how we might like to work it, we probably like to come in and say, we like this or we don't like that. But that isn't an option for us in yeah. this budget. Right. Well, it's an option. It just doesn't. What? <laughs> it's an option. We can right. With that, no effect. <laughs> I, uh, you know, the budget before it came to Board of Finance was, uh, you know, I, I wish the uh, I wish the Board of Education took some of the uh, suggestions by the superintendent uh, on the efficiency. Not all of them, but I think the uh, the guidelines that we give on class sizes made sense, and I I don't think um, I think it was the right decision not to take advantage of those. But at the end of the day, you know, it was 6.8% increase. Um, and the Board of Finance took two million, two million out, and you know, I wanted to see before I would vote on it what what, what these cuts are. So I looked through this memo. Uh, it's the only sort of source of where I think it's going to end up. But um, and there are a couple of big questions to me. But you know, it's, it's I always think, you know, does it going to cut? Is it going to achieve the educational goals that, that I think we should achieve? Right and and you know, the, a lot of them make sense. There's a lot of efficiencies here. We, we basically insource it with a lot of the stuff, right? Uh, the, uh, but there's other <coughs> stuff that I think does impact the students. Um, and, and especially there is this one that's been discussed a lot um, regarding the, uh, the music teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just don't want to point out one thing, um, but it's that's the one that I cannot get my arms around because, you know, people who teach music, <coughs> Uh, and also some of the Board of Education didn't like that change. So there's about, out of the two and a half million, uh, there was about 170,000 between the art and music that I probably would hope that Board of Education finds different uh, different sources for these and we actually preserve the art and, um, and music as, as, as we had it before these cuts were suggested. Uh, now, more generally, this is one thing, one item out of 100, you know, 20 million dollar budget, but reality is, what I said at the beginning, I, I wish this, pro this, this, this process would be further along for me to vote on it. And I realize where RTM, what the role is, but, you know, I want to see that meeting tomorrow because there could be people who come with totally different ideas and will put this, and this memo will not be actionable at all. Um, you know, so for me to actually vote yes, I would uh, love to see the meeting tomorrow. And I realize that it's going to be non-binding meeting, but at least I will get some kind of sense uh, before voting on the 13th, whether uh, where the Board of Education stands. At least that's what, I, that's what I'm thinking right now. Well, I, I mean, I think I expressed my opinion about the process and what was disappointing about it, so I won't repeat that. Um, in the end, we don't have any line item control, so there's no point in talking about what, what I think they could cut. Um, I think that I would support the budget um, that came to us. Um, I'm sorry that it, they had to find $2 million. I, I wish it had happened differently, but I said that. Um, and as to the tax increase for the average, for, for the homeowners, 6% is average, but it's not, I mean, some people are going to see 10%. Some people, you know, and you can you can figure it out. You know, the mill rate times your assessed value. If you'll find out, and uh, Jim Palin gave some examples last week, which which I have here. Um, so some people's increase will be more than six. Some people may be less, 
but you know, if we're concerned about the tax rate, I think we have to look at it as um, you know, the taxes pay for services. And this town has good yeah. services. The schools are one type of service. There are parks. There are roads. All that. The selectmen's budget, you know, indicates you know what they think is important. So you know, police protection, all that. So I think um, I would support the budget, um, and um, you know, hopefully things will work out better next year. Anyone else? I just wanted to say that. I, I agree with what Leclerc just said. Um, I, I feel I will definitely vote yes for the budget because I do not want to see the Board of Education in a position of having less than they need. And I think to vote no would be a, a terrible consequence for the schools and for the town. Um, and I think that the, you know, I know we're not, we have no one item, and I know that we have met, that they have met tomorrow to discuss the, you know, whether they're going to shore up the, the two million. But um, as as Peter noted, there are some, you know, really smart efficiencies that are pointed out in here, like taking the, you know, the OT is in the speech um, in in house and making those efficiencies there. But I and think finger it, printing. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> those are great ideas, and I, I strongly support that. I'm really concerned about taking out the paraprofessionals in the elementary yes. schools. I think that's a horrible idea, and I wish very much that they will not do that, because those um, those people are the lifeblood of those elementary schools. They're very much needed by all kids, but especially any kids that have any kind of special needs or just need a little extra help, those folks are essential. So I hope that they do not eliminate those positions. Um, and again, I know that's a small item in a big budget, but um, that's my wish for it. The, how the, the remaining you know two million gets showed up. But. You mentioned something that I just I just want to yeah, yeah. jump in. Yeah. I want to go back to it. Um, the the in sourcing the potential seven people that directly have interactions one among the kids. Mm -hmm. Has there been confirmation that these can actually be hired? Okay. That, that is also going to be just again I'm going to say yes to approving, but that's very concerning to me to give up a contract and yeah. believe that we're going to be able to fill positions. Yeah. That's the so concern with I think with all of these where there's like you know we're going to have efficiencies you know we're yeah. we have yes. attrition. I think well you know there's that, but now when we find ourselves in a position of needing to add um, staff. It's going to be very difficult. These are very specialized yeah. roles. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that we can send these messages over to the Board of Ed for their meeting tomorrow. Um, and there's one other thing that I would like to add, and that is everyone frequently talks about taxpayers and what's going to happen with taxpayers is if they are somehow separated from those of us who have children in the school. And all of us are taxpayers, so it's not just, these tax rises are affecting all of us. Sometimes people talk about the fact that, well, you know, I don't have any children in the school and I'm having to pay this much. Well, they're still paying to live in this town, in part, because of the schools. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes people in town forget that. We're all paying the tax increases. Well, I don't have children in the school anymore, I forgot. But <laughs> I do have grandchildren in the school. <laughs> I keep talking about my kids. <laughs> They're older than you guys. <laughs> um, I w just picking up on something you, you said, I, so I'm sure the members of the Board of Ed will probably watch this meeting, but you, know, you all should realize that it, if you choose to speak individually for your own at one of their meetings you know they are very interested in your comments and even though you may be speaking for yourself you you know as a member of this committee like th that is noted so if you have a particular strong feeling for something that is or is not in the budget or is potentially being cut even if we're not discussing it here you should make that point known to them either in the meeting or email and when you send the email and they share it you know to all members good point um anything else okay uh are we ready to vote mm -hmm. so um again just again what well, we're going to be recommending to the rtm 
to support to vote for the budget as put forth, revised by the Board of Finance. Um, can I get a motion to that effect? Claire? Have you have you seconded or made a motion? Uh, at the last meeting. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure as a person to, we were we I'm were happy to do any. Okay. Any okay. moving okay. second no, no. instead? If you thirding. Second. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Opposed? You're in yes. Okay. And I'm, abstentions? I'm abstention. Oh, you're abstent. Okay. Abstention. Okay. okay. Um, motion passes. Uh, do we have any public comment? Channel 79, would you like to comment there? Since you're a public person? No? Okay. Uh, then. At 8.13, if there is a meeting to adjourn, a motion to adjourn, rather. So moved. Second? <laughs> um, all in favor? Thank you very much.